All right. Um, I'm going to take two minutes out of my day to try and explain the neutron drip line, which is something I didn't know what it was until about an hour ago when I just jumped across nature.com and found this interesting little thing. So um, it says here, basically what you can do is you can add neutrons to any given atom, uh, which uh, most of you know, those are called isotopes. And what's interesting is if you keep, you can keep adding um, neutrons up to a certain um, extent, and at that point, um, the neutrons they don't bind anymore, and that is called the neutron drip line. Um, what's interesting about it is, you know, this boundary, um, as I say here, it's not been fully mapped. And also the theoretical location of the drift line is uncertain. Um, but I can maybe illustrate this quickly with this chart. It's the same images here. I just have it bigger over here. And that is that if you take um, an element, for example, neon has 10 protons and 10 neutrons. So usually it's neon 20, right? And then if you add another neutron, it becomes neon 21. And if you add one neon 22, and that's all still stable. But then if you keep going, um, it becomes unstable. Here they just call it exotic. You can keep going and adding neutrons until you reach neon um, 34, for example. And that's where this drip line is. And then if you keep adding neutrons and neon 36, for example, um, the neutrons are unbound. Um, so I'm not sure why neon 35 and 33, they're not on here. Maybe they haven't been found yet or we can't make them synthetically or I'm not sure. You can also subtract um, neutrons, and then here there's also no drip line um, or just no line of, of if things become unstable or unbound or whatever. But um, yeah, the way I understand it is, um, or it says here actually, if adding a neutron increases the binding energy, the neutron sticks, otherwise, the energetically disfavored neutrons drips off. Um, and then there's an image here where you can see that if you basically increase the, increase the binding energy, the total energy of the system it actually reduces. So you have more bound, um, or just tighter nuclei. And then they form in like an elliptical shape, which it also says here. And then at some point you see this ellipse or like, um, elliptical nuclei is has a lower energy than this. So as soon as it increases, these neutrons become unbound because it's energetically unfavorable. Anyway, so if you look here, what's interesting also is that it says nuclei, um, they can produce deformed nuclei, ellipsoid um, nuclei that rotate, that throw off gamma rays, which is basically they become radioactive, um, which is probably why all of these dots here are orange or exotic or I think unstable would be the better word, I guess, um, because they come become radioactive and they decay. And then, uh, I mean, finally, what they just in this paper here, um, I'll think I'll link this somewhere. Um, what you can see is that they calculated different contributions to the binding energy, which is the mean monopole energy um, and then the formation energy. And it's some uh, says here. Um, the nuclei initially become increasingly deformed, um, but even as more neutrons are added, um, the nuclei become more difficult to deform, and the deformation contribution falls more quickly than does the increase of monopole contribution, which then leads to the neutrons to become unbound. Um, but so yeah, um, given that, you know, here it says, uh, the drip line for magnesium is only predicted. And right here, there's only three drip lines found. And for oxygen, I think oxygen 26 here, it says unbound, 28 unbound, but 25 we haven't gotten yet. So um, certainly very interesting that, you know, given all the knowledge we have um, of uh, you know, nuclear physics and um, all the isotopes we can produce, we actually don't really know um, if the, where the strip line is, and even if like, um, 
I mean, we have three elements right now. We have this drip line app. We don't even know. It might be like a local phenomenon. I'm not sure if there is a drip line or not in like the lower elements. Um, I'm not a nuclear physicist, so. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope that helped. Well, I just thought it was very interesting. I just found this an hour ago or so and I read it and I thought it was very interesting. I'll link this article. It goes into better detail um, how exactly it's calculated with um, the, you know, the, the, the mechanisms and stuff um and it's all like open access from nature so um i assume the information here I haven't actually checked this author but yeah i assume it's like all the papers that i'm, I'm using here are legit because nature is a very very good magazine um yeah and that will be it